Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Brian. I'm the host of the Left of Greg show. You're going to be watching the video version of our audio podcast. Please, guys, if you like the video, like it, uh, subscribe to the channel. There's going to be more content on there if you're already a subscriber. And a better way for us to get you guys some more stuff. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. Check out our links down below to get a hold of us and to actually find out more places where you can get more information about this. Please like and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook at HBPRNA. Remember, all these cases that we discuss and all the discussions that we have are through the lenses of what we call human behavior, pattern recognition, and analysis. So, please like it, share it, tell your friends about it, and we hope you enjoy the show. Thanks. All right, Andy. Well, uh, thanks for hopping on here with us. So, we'll just kind of go ahead and get started. And I know you've got a, uh, you got a pretty good story. Uh, I think we'll start with how you know Greg and, and HBPRA and his program. So, I know you got a good story at least to tell on when you first met Greg. And I think we should, we should kind of start there. Yeah. Well, first, guys, thanks uh, for having me on. It's a, it's a real honor and a pleasure and, uh, to be with uh, not only you, Brian, but uh, w- with the infamous uh, Greg Williams, who I've, been a, who I've been a big fan of for a long time, ever back when he was working with the, the U.S. Marine Corps with the Combat Hunter Program. And uh, so I'll just I'll caveat that with saying, hey, I, that's when I got familiar with uh, your guys' work with HBPRA. I was teaching at West Point, teaching mental skills training there, and, and we could talk about that. But no kidding, there I was, uh, Joint Base, Lewis McCord, Washington, Circa 2014, I was a, another nameless, faceless staff puke escorting <laughs> uh, the famous Greg Williams around. You know, uh, you know, he was really demanding. He wanted to have like only green jelly beans and like you know, <laughs> some. I think he wanted a smoothie of some sort yeah. and you know something about a martini, something about a martini. And then so he's there, you know, to be able to to pitch a really cool program with HBPRA. Uh, and actually to do it for uh, the Army's suicide prevention program, which we can talk about uh, as well. But, you know, hey, we're an hour ahead of time. We're going to the venue. It's, there's a whole bunch of general officers and VIPs going to be there. It's, uh, it's Greg and his entourage. Uh, uh, you know, they, they were laying out the red carpet for him because he's really demanding. <laughs> and, you know, and of course, you know, the whole time, uh, I got to carry the conversation because Greg is really hard to talk to. Like, he's got right. the person. He's got <laughs> He's got the personality of like a cinder block, right? We all yeah, know that. So, right, right. So, you know, I'm pulling stuff out of him. And so my conversation, seriously, it was like, was like literally me listening and Greg talking. And no way. So, that's oh, yeah. that's every listener to this podcast, by the way. For an hour straight. I kid you not. And so yeah. I, I, I would never embellish. And, <laughs> uh, what, and so, you know, I, it was a great conversation, really connected on terms of our previous work and, and what our, you know, we're geeking out pretty hard. And then, you know, the, you know, so then the, the GOs come in and then, you know, he gets up and he's pitching and I forget the gentleman's name. He's a retired army Colonel. You'll, you remember, you'll have to insert his name, but uh, anyway, so he's, I sit down, you know, I'm in the back in the cheap seats and I'm, I'm taking notes. Right. And he starts to launch into his pitch. And it, it occurs to me that everything that we just talked about the last hour, Greg is now saying verbatim with all the lights on. And I was like, <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second. I just felt like, did I just get played? That's, you, that's did. Like, you did. I, I just, you, and I'm like, I just, I just did. totally got played. I just totally got played. And then I thought to myself, I'm going to, uh, this is stolen. I am totally doing this again. And yeah. gr- so Greg, uh, you know, the, I, I'll say the imitation is the best form of flattery. And I got to tell you that since that time, I've actually, I, I've actually played some unsuspecting staff you like myself to, to do the same thing. So hats off to you, brother. So just so you know, Colonel, that's called a rehearsal. <laughs> and and the, the, the only thing about your memory that you got wrong, it wasn't the M&M's. You remember, I'm, I'm a carnivore. So it was probably yeah. that we had to stop and get meat on the way there. And it was probably red meat at that. No, that, yeah, was, you're a, right. that was a great gig. And if you remember uh, how many stars were in that room. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we, we, definitely knocked, uh, we definitely knocked some of the dust off of the brass. And, and – Hopefully, uh, hopefully a few people walked out of there smarter. If you recall from that, one of the uh, lead players uh, for the Army in the suicide prevention program was the fire brand Vicky Duffy. So oh, my gosh. Shout out to Vicky Duffy. So, so Marin, shout out to Vicky. Marin, what you have to understand yep. is I've got this Andy, first of all. And, folks, we, we could do a, a – In my own right, mind. Exactly. In my own mind. We, we, well, first of all, 
that's actually him. Uh, he's standing at attention while he's speaking to it. Uh, so that's how much discipline he's got. But if we wanted to just do your resume, Andy, we could do that now. Brian, you got to understand that uh, axons and dendrites and coming together and all of this uh, energy. So Andy is like nonstop. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like adrenal cortex pumping and he's going. And I'm doing the same thing. And we're like, you know, inch away yelling. And then Vicky Duffy comes. Yeah. Vicky's all of like four foot nine. And she's like oh, yeah. a whirling dervish. And she's screaming at us. So people kept looking at us and go, is this part of the show? Is this part of the yeah. show? <laughs> so we this got this is play. the show. So it, real, it was a show. Quick on, just on, so everyone has the same description. Because uh, Andy and I talked on the phone the other day when we linked up. And he goes, he goes, well, you know, he goes, do you remember the uh, female with suicide prevention with the army? This, the, he goes, short, red hair, firecracker. Like, that was my thing, too. What I described was, like, Vicky walks down the halls. And when she walks down the halls, like, the lights start exploding as she goes by. Yeah, exactly. But she's so good at her job. Yeah. She cared so much. She cared so, both so of much. You know, did, did so she, much for suicide prevention. Just I mean, so you know, she works for the inspector general's office now. Okay. And I truly mean this. Shout out to Vicky. Yeah. Uh, Vicky was the one man gang. She did more to talk about suicide prevention in the army. She did more for JBLM than, than, and, and, you know, I mean, other than a geo that had the influence, she was the ground truth. She was the boots on the ground. She was on the ax and she was making things happen. And, and, and Andy, if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would have been out there speaking. And I certainly wouldn't have uh, met you and, and I'm honored. Thanks for your service. Thanks for everything that you've done uh, to keep our nation and our constitution strong. Likewise, brother. And uh, yeah, I, and I'll just say that, you know, while we're rifting on talking that, about that program, and, you know, one of the things I was so fired up about HBPRNA, and like I said, I got exposed to it early on. And then, um, you know, the Special Operations Forces Advanced Situational Awareness Training, I got, I saw it again when I was in Seven Special Forces Group, um, you know, became a bigger fan. And then when, it, and then when I it came across it again up there, it was brilliant because my frustration has been, you know, and I can say this because, you know, I'm a tenured member of, and I think the government at large has this, you know, we, we and, I, and I also see businesses and, and sports struggle with this is that we tend to focus in on the attitudes and behaviors that we don't want and, and prevention. And we're, and we're not as focused. And, and to me, that's, it's, it's crazy because it's like, right. can you imagine us as a, you know, taking a bunch of Marines to the range and telling them, Hey, I want you to take your rifle and, I, and don't miss the target. Could you imagine yeah, us doing exactly. that? Exactly. It's a great analogy. Yeah, no, that's a perfect analogy for it. But behaviorally, that's what we're doing. And right. so what I loved about what you guys were doing is taking a prevention focus because, you know, we got, you know, our, uh, it's a huge problem and we know it, right? And so, but we're so focusing on the, the things what I call, you know, uh, you, the, the, before the weekend formation, and you're talking about, hey, uh, don't beat your wife. Hey, don't do drugs. Yeah. Don't do this. Yep. And essentially we are priming our people towards the behaviors that we don't want. And what I loved about what you guys were doing is you were focusing on a skill set that was not only going to make soldiers and teams better at what they do, you know, just in terms of, of transferable behavioral skills, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have the effects that we want. You know, the unintended byproduct would be the prevention of the behaviors we don't want, you know? So, yes. Uh, yeah. So and anyways, I'll, I'll shut up. I, I think. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's a good point. And, and that's exactly. kind of what, but since we're on that, that topic of just HBPRA in general, you've seen it in a few different forms, right? So you've yeah. seen it applied to suicide prevention. You've seen it in the, in the kind of the, the, the special operations version, very kinetic. Hey, we're going to war kind of thing. Sure. This is how you do it. So, so you, cause you have a, a huge background and experience in different types of of mental skills training, like you said, sports performance and psychology. Uh, you've taught, you've studied, you know, you have the degrees and you have the experience, right? So you have the, the tacit knowledge and you've got the explicit knowledge. So, so I, I think that's a good point. Then what, what is it about the HBPRA? Like you said, focus on the positive, but what is it that you see beneficial as like, as for everything that you already do and have been doing for a long time? Yeah, well, I, I, well, I think the, the principles having to do with baseline uh, anomaly and decisions is, is a universal construct. I mean, that's right. first and foremost. The transferability to a bunch of different performance application, that's, that's inherently valuable. You know, not everybody understands that, but it is. And, and we know that. And, the, and I think everybody listening in knows that now. You know, right. so for, for me, um, the really the aha moment that I had, and, and I'll give you a, a context of how it relates to mental skills training that's specifically related to the evidence-based best practices uh, and the research on sport and performance psychology. It's, it's been around for about a hundred years. Um, you know, and, and I, I will caveat also saying that I, I feel blessed to be in, in a 
you know, do it as a practitioner and researcher in the time when this is actually acceptable. And it's not just California hot tub stuff. And I can right. say that because because I'm from California. So it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just this, this touchy feely stuff anymore yeah. that we talk about in the shadows. You know, this is like important. The intangibles are really important. Specifically, like the attention control principles are really what jumped out at to me. And frankly, you know, anybody just here, here's a here's a, a pro tip is that anybody who's involved in psychology probably got involved because they themselves, you know, were, were stuck at some point in time in their life. And I'm no different. And I, and I certainly don't have it all figured out. And I, you know, I apply everything that I teach. I try to walk the talk in a, in a very humble way. And, and use myself as a as a laboratory and you know in the military has been no different um but we were uh the attention control principles in terms of understanding how attention works um and in terms of and, and again using the brain as a weapon system to where you understand where your attention goes you have a dominant style which robert Nettifer really coined a, a lot of the similar research behind this too so we you have an awareness of how your attention works specifically under duress it tends to narrow but he, you know, the understanding where your attention goes and then how to be able to then d direct, sustain it uh, and then shift it on demand and then and managing distractions. Right. A lot, a lot of that is what brought me into this world. Um, and we were doing, we were teaching a lot of this to different populations mm -hmm. uh, at West, at West Point. We were exporting it out to different units who were demanding this type of training. It was at the precipice of that demand signal. And uh, one of those customers was, if you will, for lack of a better term, is was the EOD school which at the time was at Redstone Arsenal. And we had a guy, um, his name's uh, Dave Rusciutti, and shout out to Dave, uh, who just really was an innovator. And you know, we saw there just, there wasn't enough meat on the bone to really deliver what we wanted to. And so he was a, he was a Marine reservist, uh, played semi-pro football, great guy. And he, he came across the Combat Hunter program, was exposed to it and everything that, that you taught, Greg. And, uh, and said, hey, what if we take this, this program the Marine has and we add it to the, and we, we mix it up into this gumbo uh, 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 you know, uh, mental skills training that's gonna make these EOD technicians in their basic and advanced school, make them better at what they do, you know, which is, everybody's watched the movie, uh, the, uh, the Hurt Locker, right? You know, it's kind of right. pop culture, the guy in the bomb suit, you know, yeah. diffusing, diffusing the bomb. I mean, talk about high stakes situation, you know, and where attention is really fundamental, you know? So to me, you know, adding the situational awareness piece into that and the and all the principles that you teach in HBPRA and, that, and that's just one example that I think where when you blend these things together uh, but essentially from a cognitive and emotional standpoint you know everybody has to understand be aware of their baseline they need to understand what the anomalies are you know in terms of how they act and react they need to learn how to manage themselves and then and then and beyond self you need to understand how to be uh, aware of others in your environment and then how to influence what you can control or influence within that too. So yeah, and those are the, I want to hit touch on a couple of things that you brought up, Andy, because there are great points. And and you go, you know, you, you guys, especially you guys in high performance jobs, military, law enforcement units, or people who are trying to figure this stuff out, right? There's a lot of a lot of talk. There's a lot of research. There's a lot of study. But then you you say a lot of like, well, how do we actually conceptualize that, right? How does this? Sure. How do we learn this? Learn from this study and go. How do we apply that? And that was what I mean. I, you know, obviously I'm biased. I, I teach this with Greg, but that's what caught me on right away. Was like, wait a minute. This is this is the actual application of it. This is how you actually apply all of these different studies and all of this different research. This is the way to do it. And and you because you, you you mentioned something. Not enough meat on the bone. With, with in that I would I would say a lot of studies, a lot of training. Yeah, there's not enough there to really go on. And that's why the academic community always says, oh, we need more research. We need more research and sure and we're, we're, in the meantime we're out here applying it and anything evidence-based which is i love where there's been you know we've been poked and prodded by army research institute uh office of naval research a whole bunch of different other research organizations that went holy crap you know the research shows this works and here's the the knowledge skills attitudes aptitudes abilities you walk away from and they're all based on you know what did the spiker report that like 40 different psychological principles that said this is the application of it right here mm -hmm. this is what you're mm -hmm. learning this is how you take another person's perspective right because that's we all say that right they like think like the enemy think like a bad guy okay mm -hmm. that's great they're how platitudes they're how empty platitudes no, no, but, but they, without they, yeah. training right, right without, without training. training and without an architecture they're it's, empty platitudes it's, it's a great way to do it and it's that external and internal skill set and that's what you, you know you just mentioned right there at, at the end of your comments too is about reading your baseline and that's what i always tell people is like you want to get good at the skill set 
stand in front of the mirror and do it. You know what sure. I'm saying? And, and, and figure out what it is that you are putting out there, what it is that, that mm -hmm. you are doing and how you're affecting your environment and reading your baseline. And, and when you get good at that, it's easy to do everyone else because you know sure. yourself well. Yep. I think that, that comes into, you know, like you said, there's, there's sports performance, there's different types of emotional strength training, there's this, there's mindfulness, there's all these mm -hmm. different terms and studies. And, and what I look at them as is people are out there trying to figure this out and, and sure. Do, Hey, I got this great concept. Let's get really good at that. And then uh, it might be good or it might only work, or maybe it's not mm -hmm. fleshed out enough. And that's what always brings me back to the HBP RNA. And like you said, you know, I, I went, once I went down this rabbit hole and started, you know, and, and Greg would always say, Hey, you know, the answers are all your answers are in your instructor guidebook. Well, what guys would go like, Hey, this doesn't tell me what to say on slide, you know, 237. But what, yeah. what's written in there is, Hey, this is um, the second law of thermodynamics. Hey, this is Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This is mm -hmm. Total's incompleteness theorem. This is what game theory is. And so I'm going like, but like, of course, just one paragraph on it. And you're like, wait, what? And then yeah. you, you then and it's go, a Greg paragraph yeah. where, I, where I street it up <laughs> in my Detroit knowledge. So, but, but it was a drop on a tongue, you know? But that, that's the idea is then you start going down. And then literally the mm -hmm. longer, the longer I taught this program, the longer, the longer I would have been doing it, I feel like the less I know. I mean, the more mm -hmm. I know, but the, the farther in depth I could go where I went, Oh my God, I could never, I could do this for the rest of my life and never fully understand. It. And so that's what hooked me. I was like, I can yeah. continue this and apply this to so many different domains. And, and you hit it up right there with the different performance stuff. So I, that I was just relaying kind of my experiences is, is, is very, it sounds like it's very similar to kind of what you have and what you're trying to do. Let, let, yeah. let me throw something in about human performance and, and because uh, human behavior pattern recognition analysis is all about human performance and critical thinking. Yep. And yep. so I'm traveling the country with some people in this thing called Sudom back in the day, the small unit decision making. And so the best and the brightest in the world, and I was lucky enough to, to be asked to drive the car because I'm nobody, I'm not, and I've never been anywhere. And so this guy sitting next to me fascinates me because he's talking crap to everybody that's in the sled before our next brief. And uh, so I asked one of the people with me, I go, hey, who's this guy? And they go, well, that's Pete Carroll. And I go, well, what's Pete Carroll doing for a living? <laughs> yeah, they go, yeah. they go you're shitting me. And I said, wow. no, Pete Carroll, I've never heard of him before. So Pete Carroll went on and spoke before me. And sorry, Pete, because I love you like a brother. But Pete goes on and talks about his new book, Winning Forever, right? Oh, and I love it. About this strategy. Yeah. And he's talking about all this stuff. And he comes off the stage. And I go up there. And I'm like, this guy's full of crap. He gets to choose from the 1% yeah, of yeah. the best of the best of all college athletes to put together a team where he's also got the subject matter experts, like, you know, the lacing of the football, the lacing of your shoe, how you, you know, hold your clipboard. He's got all this other stuff. And he's up there talking about winning forever. And the body count that was coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan yeah. was staggering. So I walked mm -hmm. up and I immediately went for the jugular and I'm like, you know what we're missing? We're missing that combat corporal. We're missing that person that's on the ground mm -hmm. making life and death decisions. And you know what? Many times he's a GED recipient. Many times it was a, yeah. a choice that, hey, go to, yeah. go, go to jail or go into the service. And you know what? We have to give them something back. And that is how do you take sage gray beard material and put it in a usable construct where that young person just come, hey, they didn't pay attention to high school. So going, taking them back to high school ain't going to do it. They, they, they don't have that academic acumen. So, so making it too academic is ridiculous. And, and, and I'll give you an example, Brian. Our viewers don't know Andy that well yet, but they certainly will after this. And they, they, because, Brian, or uh, Andy, we have three. Uh, we have three loyal listeners where you have th hundreds of thousands of people that know you. But, uh, and, and I just got to, I don't know if you were seeing me play on the phone, Daesh just called, and they're all excited that you're leaving because they're, they're losing a lot of people out of the ranks because of you, Andy. And so Daesh is saying uh, they're planning on their, on their reunion. But the idea nice. is that a, 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 guy, a guy like you, when we first met, you had it at Hello. And, and Pete Carroll, who's a genius and who knows how to motivate humans and knows how to uh, uh, put people in there, just didn't anticipate that he had to go back to uh, shirts and skills, uh, skins basketball on a weekend in Detroit and, and have that same impact. Does that make sense, Brian? Do you get where I'm going there? Yeah, I, I see. I see exactly what you're saying is that that's the difference. And that, that kind of goes into a lot of the different studies or a lot of different performance stuff. And you've got different high, like, well, especially, uh, you know, different books that are written on like, you know, high performing CEOs or these high performing organizations. Like, yeah, like, guess what? <laughs> when you have the, all that money, 
all you got yep. all that money you got uh, you've got the best and the brightest you've got the the top one percent of the top one percent greg so yep. so it, move that decimal point over one more spot because no, right. that, that's who's there and then mm -hmm. when, when the u.s military you it's called you've got who you got right and that's that's exactly and andy you're you're not a cake eater andy you're not the platinum club member you are now i mean you're a, like i said you're a legend but you weren't always so you, you had an upbringing <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, seriously, but you had an upbringing like a normal human. Like all of us had an upbringing, you were thrust in some in extremis in some amazing situations, and those situations have formed who you are and have created the insanely wonderful body of work that you've done. So tell us a couple of those things that, that, that did that for you. What, what were some of those things that took you from normal human to superhuman? Yeah, and I would add just to that question, that because you did touch on it, you know, a lot of people that get into psychology or studying that stuff yep. have something happen or are or, or curious. Because, so I know that all fits <clears throat> in, so please. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, well, well, well first of all, I, I appreciate what you guys are saying. Um, and uh, believe me, I, I am not superhuman. I, I am every bit of uh, just a normal dude uh, from California, who's just trying to figure it out. And, you know, I, I will say that, you know, I've been very lucky by some circumstances and I've had some, a lot of, uh, inspiration, but I, I think first and foremost, what I like to focus in on is just the going through the struggle, you know, and yeah. having, uh, really had to at an early age, you know, from the time, um, uh, you know, I went to West Point, I, I was really struggling. I went to the prep school. I wasn't good enough. Um, in terms of my math scores, like I, did, I didn't even take calculus my sophomore year or my senior year because I didn't think I was good at math, you know. And so I was a good enough football player. It wasn't great, uh, but I was recruited to go play football for Army and went to a prep school. And, uh, and boy, did I just really struggle um, with, you know, the academic side of things specifically. And, yep. uh, and it really, um, you know, the prep school is 220 people at the time is at Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Um, and, uh, only about 60% get, should get into West Point and every service academy has a prep school. Um, and so, you know, probably about the springtime, actually, I'm sorry, in the, probably by, you know, we, we show up, I just graduated from high school. I'm a, you know, I'm 17. My parents have to actually sign a waiver for me to go into the army. Yeah. So, but it was great physically because it was like a red shirt year for me and uh, play football, do really well, uh, end up being the MVP, offensive MVP of our team. We're playing the JUCO level did really well on the football team, but, you know, and I did well in my strength, which is English and math, but on the, on the math and science side, uh, I really struggled. And to the point where, you know, I wasn't, I did not get a, a nomination to go to West Point. You know, I did not get the nod. You know, I sat in the back of uh, the auditorium, you know, just turned 18 and watched all of my best friends and teammates, you know, get their nomination to go to West Point. And here I got this six month slog and it went down to the wire where, you know, I had to, I think I had to pass to pass a math test. I had in order to be able to put me over the edge GPA what GPA wise just to get a shot. You know, uh, I had to get like, a B minus on my final exam in math. You know, and, and mind you, I mean West Point is legit math when it comes to. I mean, it's it's a, a premier engineering school. Everyone yeah. that comes out of there has to take an engineering track. Right. Every everyone almost has a math minor, and here I am, the schlep trying to figure it out you know i i need an abacus to just to be able to to add you know i'm still using my fingers and uh, you know i take this test and i just completely poured myself into this performance and i got a 78 and i needed a i needed a b minus i needed an 80 you know and i so i mean i i here i was i, I was packing my bags i'm ready to i'm ready to, to hang it up my dad's like calling fresno state getting ready to you know i'm gonna go walk on i'm gonna go back to oakdale california with my tail between my legs and then you know and thank God that, you know, someone, you know, uh, whoever in admissions, whoever you are, I thank you, you know, uh, had mercy on me. And, and you know, they, the, the day we graduated, our last day at the prep school, I, I got my nomination to go to West Point. And it, and it really, um, and, and man, and what a struggle that was, but how important that was for me in terms right. of perseverance and going through that. And then, um, you know, it was super important. Um, and, and then just, you know, West Point was not easy. And, and I was not a good cadet. I, I would you know, I'm going to piss a lot of people off by saying this because I was on the staff and faculty later. I mean, they were dumb enough <laughs> to bring me back. But, you know, but, but I'll tell you, there's, there's, you know, there's good cadets and bad cadets. And I was not sure. a good cadet. I, I mean, I was not a – and, uh, you know, I was a dirtbag football player, as they call it, because, uh, you know, God forbid I'm out doing wind sprints, when, you know, at 6 o'clock in the morning with my teammates while my classmates are delivering newspapers to, to you know, the upper class, right? And so I'm a get-over. And there's, you know, there's a rift there. And, uh, but I – 
I'll say that, uh, you know, I just struggled in every single way, you know, and uh, specifically, again, in the math and the sciences, and thank God for my classmates. Um, you know, there's, there's, uh, you know, a saying at West Point, cooperate and graduate, people that like really, you know, helped me and tutored me and spent time with me, invested in me. Um, thank God for the, the West Point Center for Enhanced Performance, who really brought me into, you know, the, they use sport performance psychology, not only to help you athletically, but also to help you in the classroom and, and in the military side. And that really changed my life. I mean, I, I utilize that center as this island and, um, and they really helped me in so many different ways. Uh, and, to, and I, you know, I, I, to this day, I, I'm the last guy, my friends laugh, they're like, how in the hell did you survive, you know, the past, your first five years, let alone stay in the army 20 years, you know, cause everybody's right. gone. Yeah. Everybody's gone. Uh, but what I found is the dirtbag guys like me who have gone <laughs> through the struggle yep. that, Hey, you know, a, a lot of people who have gone out and, you know, they may make their millions and whatever. They're looking at me like, okay, well you, you know, of course you stayed in the army, you know, because you know, you didn't have any, you're, you're not good enough to do anything else. Okay. Well, that's maybe one thing, but the reason why I stayed in, and, I, and I feel like, you know, uh, where I am now, you know, is that because I've, I've struggled, I've had to really bust my butt, um, you know, and I've exactly. invested, you know, and, and I, you know, and, and it's, and it has not been easy. And I, and that's really what's cool about this book that I know we're going to talk about, but I feel like I, I've, I've learned how to force myself to be, to really, you know, what you guys talk about is really raising your threshold. You're, so yeah. my base, my baseline yep. and my tolerance for pain and you know mentally emotionally physically whatever is you know i think it's a lot higher than a lot of people you know and yep. i and i and i and I, i've been my life's work is really about teaching people how to do that you know uh, you, well, let me let me tell you a little about a success story andy uh, uh i want to tell you about a career arc so you know michigan looks like a hand right and so i'm from detroit which is right here on the hand okay and uh i i as a street kid get a primary candidacy to west point and so I go and I do the visit and I'm doing the doc and everything else. And a very sage person comes up to me and says, your math scores are horrible. And they said, all that riddle and didn't help in all those classes. And they said, you got to understand West Point's not a liberal arts school. You got to have an engineering <laughs> degree. So I go, I get this great idea. Instead of going to the prep school, I go from Detroit all the way up to that little running rabbit up here, way up here above, that's called uh, Northern Michigan University. Yeah. I spend nine months straight doing nothing but drinking beer, uh, playing full contact hockey and broom ball, and chasing around anything I can chase around. And finally, West Point comes back and goes, how, how's that prep school going? We, we've seen no results whatsoever. Next thing I know, I drive my motorcycle. I'm in Greenway Bay, Wisconsin, in an induction center, taking my ASVAB score and signing on the dotted <laughs> line. So what happened is sometimes life goes really, really fast. And, and what people don't understand is it's that scar tissue yep. that, that, look, November is Resilience Month here yeah. at Arcadia. Yeah, and if you cool. don't have scar tissue, you haven't lived. And that scar tissue helps build. Look, you have a decision. When you have that cut, you're either going to service that cut and not get another yeah. cut, or you're going to sit there and you're going to die from whatever disease. And you've done yeah. that your entire career. Yeah. And, and like I always Absolutely. say too, Craig, yeah. with, the, with the scar tissue analogy, if you've got that scar tissue, that means – like. so I always take these uh, different – you know what. And we'll get into resilience here in a second, but but because everyone has their own little definition, and I see people posting stuff on LinkedIn all the time. Ah, like, don't start me like on LinkedIn. Res resilience uh, and grit. And yeah, this. yeah. And it's like okay, like, and then because we we like to use the analogy, Greg d does the chumbawamba. You know, I get knocked down, but I get up I again. Get it yeah, up again. Keep it I love and, it, and yeah, and, and you love it because you get it. And I, I'll use that to people, and then someone who's an academic will go, well, technically, it's not just that. And like. Okay, look, man, this is what's worked for me. So, but, but it's so, so funny with the struggles with that stuff, too, because that sounds like the first high school I went to, I had to test into, is a really good school. And then, same thing, a little of the way through, the, the, the Jesuit priests there were like, hey, you might, you might fit in somewhere else. You know what it is? It's the pool <laughs> and the pond. Do you remember yeah. when, when they were going, there's a pool and a pond, and we think the pond yeah. is better than you? But, That's the yeah, Caddyshack. But, but, We've all been subjected to that Caddyshack, yeah, Brian, and, and, but yeah, we for sure. Back. Same thing as that struggle and like, you know, I, I was horrible at school. I could take tests well and, you know, they said I was a smart kid, but I was just, I hated being there. We I haven't seen it. About it. Yeah. <laughs> 
I hated it, but then it's funny. And then, then afterwards and later in life, you know, now it's just a constant, constant struggle and quest to learn and understand. I've got five, you know, yellow pads sitting here. All I got to transfer over into typed up notes. I've got this, you know, same thing going on. Because it is a struggle. Stuff, it's a daily it, struggle, Brian. And, and, sure. you, and yeah. you figure that out. So, so let's get yeah. into to, to everything you talked about. We, we obviously, the three of us have very kind of similar uh, yep. um, you know, stories like that. Um, but you know, get into kind of what you're going into with the book and what you guys call yep. resilience. I know it's funny that I saw in the book, you know, I, cause I've used the term all the time is, is, you know, get, get comfortable being uncomfortable and which is such a great, it's, I love little, little axioms like that little short sure. state statements that, that you could design a whole course, a book, write a book about just what that means. Like we use the, our, our motto of training changes behavior. Well, that's a very simple mm -hmm. way to look at it, but yeah. that means so much. So, so get it, t tell us about what you're, yep. uh, we're working excited right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, do you, we want to talk about definitions or. You know, well, you, you can get into the resilience and how that led you into the book and how you define yeah. it. Yeah. To talk about, I think. Okay. Yeah. Place. Perfect. Perfect. So uh, again, let me uh, first say that, um, you know, again, you know, sometimes you get these opportunities that really kind of shape who you are and they just don't happen for a reason. I, I really believe that. And uh, so when I went back and, and taught at West Point, um, you know, I, you know, I was going to get out of the army and, and frankly, I just had a long deployment. It was difficult. I missed the, you know, again, a, a struggle, you know, I mean, I was, you know, forced to be a combat advisor to do a job I was not really well prepared for. Um, had a lot of success, a lot of failures, you know, missed the birth of my second son. My wife is, just like, hey, we're, we're done. You know, we had two yep. kids. And then I get this incredible opportunity where, you know, Carl, Dr. Carl Olson, uh, just a great friend, longtime mentor, who was a captain working with me when I was a cadet, goes back, gets his PhD and, at Penn State, and then comes back as the director. And another really great friend named Doug Chadwick, uh, who is now the head sports psychologist for the Colorado Rockies, just was reached out, reaches out to me um, through the Army football, uh, you know, kind of network there you know, and says, hey, are you interested in, in coming back to West Point? And I get this amazing opportunity to go back and teach. Uh, to me, you know, it was just a, my intent and at least going in was like, you know, ask my wife, hey, you want to go to West Point? Um, hell yes. And so, you know, I, I was looking for the opportunity just to pull off on the roadside of life, reintegrate my family, and then, yep. and then figure out what's next in my life. And I, and I just discovered this love for teaching, you know, especially at the university level. You know, I, I went through a certification uh, with the venerable Dr. Bernie Holiday, and it just, it was the best class I've ever had. And then, and then shortly after that is in the Army developed its resilient, in the Army and the Air Force, actually, the Army's resilience program, which was then called Comprehension Soldier Fitness. And it was uh, mm -hmm. a partnership between the University of Pennsylvania's resilient, resiliency program. And, um, and then, and obviously they were bringing together these other parties in the space. And so I happened to just get tagged for a, hey, you go down to go down to the University of Pennsylvania in downtown Philly and figure what out what this is all about. And, you know, and lo and behold, I end up, you know, uh, someone called me the architect of the Army's resilience program, or one of them. And, and I'm like, I don't really see myself that way. But I, I was, I was, as you know, young officer, you know, really helped develop the curriculum for that and really get deep with that, you know, and meet with guys like, you know, one of the, the giants of modern psychology, Marty Seligman, Dr. Karen yeah. Rivich, yeah. Um, you know, some, and, and so like, you know, I, I got to, and here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm brand new. I have no master's degree in this field. And here I am, I'm trying to make sense of what is performance psychology? What is positive psychology? How are they interrelated? How can we make them work together to make soldiers better at, and teams better at what they do, you know? And so mm -hmm. what, one of the things that I really walked away with was, you know, because words mean things, guys, like, you know that. And it kills me, like, with these bumper sticker platitudes, just like you talked about, Greg, yep. it, it, like, really is like fingernails on a chalkboard you know uh mm -hmm. and so my inner geek is just like i have to like always like temper it down you know put yep. it back in the cage <laughs> and, and so you know to me in very very simple terms but i think the beauty of taking things that are very complex is then to take them very make them very simple so you can apply them and get good quality reps in and i think yeah um what i say when i talk about the difference in the difference between resilience and performance and even other things like grit um, perseverance is really, you know, performance is like playing offense. So let's take mm -hmm. football, football, because I'm a, I'm a football guy, right? Yep. So, you know, to let's take a football team to, to, you know, you defense wins championships, right? That's what they say, you know, Bill Belichick has proved that. And so you have to have a really stout defense. And to me, from a mental and emotional standpoint, you, that is really the prevention side of things because you're preventing the other team 
from scoring, right? Yep. And and I think, but performance psychology is really all about scoring points, right? That that's winning. That's executing tasks at the upper of your potential consistently over time. It's not the zone. It's not this unicorn and rainbow magical fleeting moment. It's yep. how well do you do when things really are sh- when shit's hitting the fan? And that's why exactly. I use the word. That's why I'm using the words optimal because you're getting the most out of what you have um, in that moment to execute tasks at upper range. And then, you know, and then there's interrelated things in there as well, too. You know, obviously grit is a bridge. Uh, Adaptability is a bridge, you know, that I call special teams, you know. And so um, those are the things that help bring all those other aspects of blocking and tackling from a psychological standpoint together. And I think, what, uh, what kills me is that, you know, like you guys say, is, is when we, we these, uh, these really niche areas, when they take, uh, you know, mindfulness is the latest one. Yeah. That's, you know, uh, yeah. I, and, 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 I, and I love mindfulness. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I, what I don't like is when people think it's the end all, be all, hack, quick fix. Um, it's the, you know, it's the only tool in the toolbox that you need well, to unlock your potential. That, that is a false. And, and okay. people get, yeah, people get wrapped up in that, just not with that, with, with a lot of things that they do. Right. Cause like Greg and I are good about saying like, look, we're, we're one piece of the puzzle. I, I think it's a pretty big piece. And I think if you get really sure. good at this piece, it'll, it'll lead you to a lot of bad areas, but, but we're not everything, you know? And, and a yeah. lot of people go, no, you just got to do this. And if you focus on this and then what happens, right. that goes through a cycle and then the next thing picks up. So yeah, you, you continue, but I see that in so many different areas and so i'm not knocking it i'm just saying you know it- no. just in, just on a timeline what, what you just had is andy just brought up uh, uh there, there are people that are legends in the the taking and blowing the dust off the psychological and actually putting it on ground truth application so you name marty seligman marty's a, a, a genius when we joked about the uh potential of uh the triangle leadership resilience and suicide and how to how to mm-hmm. use these applications there uh we used to call that the uh penn state to the state pen because you had to go to both of those institutions <laughs> to fully understand yeah. it yeah. uh dr carol ross uh gary klein uh uh next week we've got dr joan johnson on uh, uh these are the people that had it at hello and have been doing this since the if you go to seligman since the 60s and then if you yeah. go to onr and you go to the army research institute the information is there folks it hasn't changed but the problem is you have this, this mentality uh, at higher levels, first of all, that you can't do it unless you have a PhD. Then the second part right. of it is that the, the government accounting office says, well, wait a minute, uh, uh, you know, who are your sources? And you go, yeah, I invented this stuff. And they go, well, you can't because you have to have a source. <laughs> you ever, I know you've been into that a lot, Andy. And then oh, yeah, when we were absolutely. doing the counterterrorism manual, they go, well, who should we cite? I go, cite me. And they go, we can't cite you. <laughs> and so how did yeah. you fight through that that bureaucracy? How did you... How, you know, uh, and, and you really got an inside track, which is amazing, but you earned it, brother. How, how do you keep your head up every day and keep fighting the good fight? And, and where did the book come from? Where, where did your inspiration for the book come from? Yeah, uh, so to answer the, the first part of that question is, um, you know, I, I kind of saw a little bit of a train wreck happening. And so um, I ended up leaving, or I actually made a choice. I went to special operations because – you know, uh, 10 Special Forces Group was developing a, a really holistic human performance program. You know, I ended up going to the Special Forces community because they were really, truly adopting the, the athlete model that I felt like where this uh, mental and emotional piece fit into the other components of the human dimension. So that's, that's in part why I ended up going to the Special Forces community. And, you know, we had things like Thor 3 and Preservation of the Force and Family. Yeah. who really get it and granted they don't have it figured out and, and every practitioner and leader in those organizations will say that hey we're we're struggling with scale and scope mm-hmm. and, and everybody's go. and everybody struggles with that now too um one of the one of my frustrations that i ran into was that as we rolled out the resilience program is that we what i resilience became a four-letter word when we we asked those strategic corporals we were talking about you know who don't have phds and masters to then stand up in front of a classroom and give mandatory resilience training and yep. death by PowerPoint. Yep. And it, and it, and we took this incredible program that would otherwise, you know, uh, probably have actually really had maybe some potential good effects on the behaviors we wanted and the ones we didn't want. And we ended up, um, and we ended up bastardizing it. I'm just going to yeah. go say it, you know? Right. And so, and, and so to me, like where we're at now, but the good news is it's still alive. And, and the good news is that we're, we're at this opportunity. Now we're having the conversation to where, 
we can say it's really about application. And so to me, you know, what I'm trying to do at the very grass, at the grassroots level, like with the 75th Ranger Regiment here, who is just a phenomenal organization culturally, yeah. um, you know, but again, you know, they're trying to wrap their head around how do we then take, you know, because, the, you know, mental and emotional skills, because they're intangible, as you guys know, were never designed to be beholden into the classroom. They are ne- That's it. And, yep. Yep. They were That's meant been to the be, key. Exactly. exactly. Absolutely. And, and they and, were, they're, they're meant good. to be applied and practiced and with feedback from expert coaches and leaders yep. to you then learn yourself, you get feedback on how to do it right. You improve, you know, and then, you know, and that makes these intangible skills then tangible. So let's get it out of the classroom. I'm not saying kill the classroom, right? But let's move it and, out as quickly as possible. And that's the biggest difference between you, you hit it between training and education, right? Precisely. So, so education is, that's what happens. It turns into a yeah. PowerPoint and then I go, all right, Hey Andy, here you go. I'm going to give you this PowerPoint. You go, I got it. All right, cool. Now you're going to turn around and give it to the next guy. And that's just the third yeah. grade teaching the second grade. And then it's, 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 you got to have that expert model and that's, that's training though. What you're talking about is Absolutely. that, co- that coaching, is. that mentoring is, has to be a process of, okay, man, like, look, here's what you're doing. Here's how you need to fix it. Are right, you skin your knees a little bit there? Okay. Well, that's called this. And now right. you get to that next level. All right. Hey, you see how you made that mistake? And this but, is the but part of the, made. part of the problem there, there, Brian, is, is that <coughs> I'm no, <coughs> that's God, God telling me to shut up. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no longer beholden to the beltway. And this is our legal advisor telling me, waving, no, don't say it. <laughs> but when I, when I was beholden to the Beltway, Andy, absolutely everything was about how do we package this and get it to the most agencies and That's make right. $37 million on it, right. rather than how do we teach that young uh, 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 instructor writer from the U.S. Army, that young E-6 from the Marine Corps, yeah. how do we get him good enough? to get out there and start influence those folks on a daily basis and then mentor him. We started T3 at the very beginning. Yeah, that's great. have a train the trainer component. Yeah. What you do is, is, is you're paying forever for the good idea fairy to come in and, and repackage the program and give a new name to the program. And every four or five years is back in the show. Yeah. We face that. I know you face that. No, absolutely. And I think what you have is that, you know, is because, you know, and we've tried to do that with the master resilience trainer program, but I, I would say there, there is no evidence that suggests that it's, it's, uh, it's made uh, hit the headway that, you know, the price tag called for, because, you know, I really are, again, our focus is on aiming or is aiming to miss the target or aiming to not miss the target. And I yeah, think, exactly. you know, so, and the good news is, is that performance psychology is still around. Um, there are, you know, there are experts, you know, at local installations who are available. It's just not the coin of the realm. It's not the focus. It's kind of an afterthought, which is, you know, so, but I think the fact that it's still live, there's still an opportunity. And the good news is, is that there are pockets of junior leaders, you know, who, uh, who, who get it and, um, who are getting after it. And I think they're, and they're seeing the results. And I think there's lots of case studies that are out there. I, I won't spend the time mentioning what they are, but I, but what's interesting is that, you know, the reason why this kind of led to what I do outside of the military is, uh, you know, the army, you know, the military, we can, we can rip on it because guys, we're products of it, but, uh, yeah. you know, but Hey, you know, guess what? And, and our first responders and emergency medical services, as you know, Greg, our business leaders, they, they, they are probably even further behind in terms of, Hey, how do I develop these intangible attributes yes. that, I, that I know are going to impact our bottom line in terms of developing our employees. Right. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're so, yeah. That. So I'm sorry. Continue. I'll, I'll, but yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, anyways, so, uh, I'll, I'll pause there. We can talk about no, the, the, So, so that, yeah. that's a good spot. Everything you brought up. Cause I was kind of going to got into, you know, organizations talk about, uh, you know, culture and resilience and performance and doing all this stuff. And, and like you just said, people are realizing that now what that is and how to do it. And people are batting around. We, we've worked with That's and right. with a bunch of great uh, law enforcement agencies who ho- hopefully we should be starting work with them soon as well, but that yeah. are, are taking that. There's one group uh, from there. We don't have to talk about where, but they're literally taking that SOCOM kind of model and, mm-hmm. and doing it for 
every Brilliant. person at their agency. And, and, and this is what you're talking about. And they they come to yeah. us cause they hear us, they hear a podcast and they go, Hey, this is exact. The things we're, we're trying to figure out. You're saying the words, this is what yep. we mean. This is what we need. That's so, right. So I, I just talked to a, a Turner construction company at a veterans event thing mm-hmm. at their headquarters mm-hmm. and same thing. It's about building, you know, culture and there's leadership involved in that. And, and that trust and what I, I told them, you know, a good high function team, you know, you, you operate at the speed of trust, right? So, yeah. so that's the ideal, that's optimal mm-hmm. performance, but I would be interested in getting kind of your take on things and how you see, cause you know, people talk about the culture of an organization, but that really yeah. means a lot and, and leadership plays so much into that. So I know you kind of deal with that it, with, with private organizations and sports teams. So how do you see that and in how it compares to the military? Yeah, and this is actually chapter one of our book, and it's there for a reason. Um, you know, you're going to find out. But I think one of one of the cool things I get a chance to do now um, in the twilight of my, my career here is I so I, I help support a, a faculty, a, a university size Army school here at Fort Benning, and uh, and I spend most of my time supporting the our faculty and our, our instructors. But I get a chance to teach once in a while, and, and I and actually teach this uh, kind of talking about the psychology of trust and what I call it again, in very simple terms, but I think it's effective in communicating how, why trust is important, how it works. It's calling it the currency of optimal performance um, oh, at, the individu- yeah. at the individual and organizational level. And, I, and there's been some, and, it's, and again, it's based on some really good research. You know, Paul Zak, who, um, mm-hmm. who wrote Trust Factor, who I know you're aware of, uh, Greg and Brian. Yep. And, and, yeah. and so, and, but also uh, Dr. Bob Rotella, who talked about a lot with, in sports psychology, was this I you know in the game in the book golf is a not a game of perfect is this idea about training yourself to trust yourself and a lot of people think about trust as being this interpersonal um, exchange which is true and that's where a lot of uh, Zach's work is on this too but what I like the Rotella approach really starts from the inside out and I when I talk to my students um, you know I say hey you know think about when you're in the wild west and you're start if you're in Dodge City you know, uh, in the 1800s, and you're opening up uh, the bank of trust as a leader, you know, what was what's the first thing that you got to be able to do, you know, to be able to get people to invest in you, uh, you know, and to be able to, you know, you got to be And the answer is you got to secure the people's money, right. So the inside out approach of, you know, learning how to train yourself to trust yourself, um, I think is incredibly important. I think it starts there. And, and then learning how to then, you know, be able to, you know, I, I think a lot of people think that, and I think when we understand neurologically how oxytocin works, which is statistically, you know, probably insignificant outside of, you know, probably, you know, trustworthiness or when uh, somebody else is constantly, we constantly evaluate each other, whether or not we're worthy of each other's trust. Right. You know, right. and so, and then we get in these dynamics and, and I think a lot of leaders think some, you know, they, they go one way or the other tend and I don't want to make it binary, but it's like, Hey, well, they've got to, they've got to, you know, earn my trust before I trust them. Which I think yeah, is a which, false assumption yeah, because it really is. Uh, it really is. It's really, a false assumption. That, that should take a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good luck with that. How's that working? Exactly. For you? That's, yeah. That's that's what I that's what I say. And the reality is, is that you have to be a trust giver. It means that you have to be willing right. to lo- loan trust, but you have to loan trust as a currency, but with terms. And that has to be. And then there comes in the 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 you know the the sister of trust, which is communication, which is. You know, in the military, we talk about counseling, but, you know, um, we, we talk about communicating expectations and accountability and, and what that looks like. And, uh, and we get into the nuance, um, you know, I kind of use a stoplight model uh, uh, when it comes to inter- interpersonal trust. So there's intrapersonal, which is within self and training yourself to trust yourself. Mm-hmm. And then there's interp- interpersonal, which is beyond self between one or more people. And, you know, and I use, I, I walk through a, what I call a stoplight model, which, you know, there's. There's green light behaviors that we want and we encourage. Um, there's yellow light behaviors that are kind of become warning signals, you know, they're, yep. they're hab- that are habits. And then there's red light behaviors that are the red lines that we say that, hey, that, that people can cross. And then the other really interesting conversation is, is like, okay, let's say somebody crosses a red line and it, which is worth 10 people, t- we tend to, especially leaders tend to focus in on the red lines and, yeah. and, not, the, and not the green and amber behaviors. But then, hey, how do I rebuild trust once it's broken? Because people, yep. people are people are going to screw up, and, and we and we don't want to be this adverse to failure, you know, um, in all its forms or mistakes. Uh, uh, so, like, how do we, 
you know, at what point in time, you know, how do we rebuild trust, you know, once it's broken, right? If it is reparable, first of all, yes or no, then if it is, how do we go about doing that? And, and I think that's a really interesting conversation, um, you know, because what happens a lot of times I see on the corporate side is that, hey, they just get terminated. You're, you're right. terminated, you're, you're right, but That's HR. HR doesn't have an architecture yeah. for fixing. HR has a, you know, black and white, right is wrong, this is out. And, and you know, Andy, when, the, the reason that Brian and I and, and everybody at Arcadia is going to work so hard to, to get your book out there and to, and to populate uh, 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 or to, to uh, make it better known than, than it's impossible to say that. Again, we only have three listeners. And if Brian buys two of them are, and two of them are on the podcast it. right now. Exactly. Yes. That's what uh, I'm trying to say. <laughs> but the idea is that, first of all, uh, uh, go back to Benning. Shout out to Benning. Uh, shout out to the 75th, or the Pathfinders, uh, uh, Sniper School, uh, U.S. Army Sniper School. Yeah, Everybody yeah. that's embraced these principles. But here's the thing. Here's what you've done, Andy, is, is we talk about all the time flashlight and laser and that you have to do yourself and do others. And we mm -hmm. talk about being able to take it from the battlefield to the boardroom. Because yep. these self-same skills of resilience, of, uh, of, of uh, accountability, uh, of, of suicide prevention, nobody at that business – knows anybody in that business better than somebody else that works there. Nobody knows right. a soldier better than a fellow soldier. And, and so the, the buddy, that, that idea that your buddy can come up to you and go, hey, time, time out, you're, you're, you're driving out of your lane. You got to get back to focus. You got to, we, we have to establish that as a normal part of the culture of an organization. That's right. And, yeah. and, and, and we haven't as a nation fully embodied that yet. So, so we'll take Curlex. Uh, we see Curlex in a battlefield and we'll take that. And now it's at all <clears throat> police stations and emergency room, but we won't take the principles of leadership or accountability or, or any of those. It's, in it's, it, it's exactly kind of what, what Andy, what you're talking about. And we obviously use a similar analogy when you said, you know, green light, yellow light, red light. And it goes yep. back to, Hey, here's what yeah, everyone focuses on that red or Amber area where this is where it's at. And, and that goes well, that's right. Bang. Into, that's, but, but, that's, well, that's, exactly. and that's what I was getting yeah, to that, that goes right. right into a school shooting or preventing workplace violence or mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. everyone goes, well, just give me the 10 things I need to know. Give me the list of things I need to know to look yep. out for. And, and that's where a lot of people come in and they go, all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with this plan. So when a guy, you know, shows up with a gun and we're going, whoa, 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 you're at red. Why don't we start this process back here in mm -hmm. exactly. fostering green. this environment? And then mm -hmm. you can identify, then what you look out for is those yellow indicators. Now you're there. So, so that way, if we, we nip it in the bud there, it never gets to red because, because red's obvious and easy. And we, we keep focusing in that area, just like you talk about is, is that focusing on, Hey, you know, don't miss the target. It's like, okay, hey, look, well, that putting, tell putting me how to round, put it in this end ring. Putting more round sound range, yeah. using more sesums doing the flashbangs in a classroom and all that other mm -hmm. stuff is fine. Of course, that component is absolutely necessary, but it doesn't sure. make you a better decision maker and it doesn't yep. fix broken humans and it doesn't increase human performance. So that's absolutely. why we're excited about your book, Andy. And we, we really want to do something so, about that. And we so want yeah, to make sure that people talk, are listening. And talk about the, the book real quick because it's written yeah. with a bunch of folks. And you've it got is. a bunch of really great through. folks that we yeah, all love. So, oh, so I, you know, I'm just checking out some of the sure. people and the backgrounds on their on your website of mission60.com. Yeah. It's like super, super impressive. So get into the book, name of it. Yeah, we can't be on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, man. Oh, that's, that's going to be in the, in the, in the next, the next book, uh, you know, where we, we partner up here, but, uh, um, so real quick mission six zero management consulting company, uh, blends the evidence-based, uh, best practices of, um, us special operations and, um, and be uh, various behavioral science disciplines, apply behavioral science disciplines. So this is our book. Um, it's been around about seven years. And, and I think one thing is that we have this amazing stable of, of folks who have these I mean, war heroes legitimately. We have two Medal of Honor winners and Leroy Puitri and Flo Groberg. You know, we've got the only man who's been, Amen. Steve Mueller, who's been, uh, you know, a, a, an Army Ranger, a Navy SEAL, and an Army Green Beret. He's a real life action figure, yeah. one of the most humble, incredible human beings he ever met. All he wants to do is be a football coach at the professional level. And, you know, he's telling his story. And we bring their real life stories together, which would otherwise be, you know, um, independent and woven it together uh, to be able to, let's imagine these guys are on a special forces team and our founder, my, my great friend, uh, Jason Van Camp, my army football brother from another mother, uh, who's our founder and president. He's essentially, imagine he's the, the special forces team leader showing up out of the qualification for course for the first time. 
he meets his commander for the first time and the commander tells him to take a journey talking if he really wants to be successful in his unit and to take them to another level as they get ready to deploy imagine he just has to meet all these incredible figures and learn about their stories and take and get the takeaways from them and so he does that and um and then but what's cool about our our company and, and this book is is really you know it's not just your average self-help book where you know you can pull it off the it's it's some you know navy seal sniper you know and oh, you know talk talking about how awesome he is I yeah mean, you know, God, there's God, plenty you know, of those I, books out there yeah. and, there's and, a lot and, of them and, yeah. and god love them and god love them you know but i mean you know, they have some incredible stories but really it's the it's the so what and now what that we bring to the table yep. and i and and that's where our, our stable scientists that i'm fortunate enough to help kind of lead and, and be the lead uh, cat herder there is uh, amazing practitioners who are established in various fields of psychology, sociology, um, who not only teach, but practice uh, and have amazing stories themselves. A lot of them are, are former athletes, leaders in business, and they write the science section, which really, so for every single chapter, we have really a specific takeaway where we get into this, the, not only briefly the science, but the usable application and right. how to take what you just learned from this amazing uh, Medal of Honor winner, um, you know, which a lot of people think, okay, that's great. I, I, how, how does that relate to me? Right. Well, that's exactly. What, that's that's where we, we connect we, the dots. Yeah. We, we call it, that the so what. The so Andy. what. Yeah. And and so what. You, yeah. You yeah, get so what. right to the so yeah. what. Get so right to the so what. And and so, uh, I, I'm really, you know, I, I, as a, you know, as kind of the contributing editor, that was mine. Was my job was to be the keeper of the so what. And, and hopefully, I've done. I, I, and hopefully. Uh, that I've done a good enough job. I'm really proud of my team. This was a, you know, it's one thing to write a book, which I, I didn't appreciate, but it's another thing to, to write, to have a, you know, to have 24 co-authors and, yeah. and, try, to, and try to cobble this together. Right. Um, but, but our, really our goal is to provide this tangible artifact we can put in people's hands. That's going to make them better at what they do. That That's and, the flat and, out. And that's, that's, you're, that's, you're, a, that's exactly a what we're, 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 we're trying to, we always try to do right with giving that. So what exactly. to every lesson learned, like you just talked about, there's a book or a movie out all the time and everyone goes, Oh wow, that was cool. And you just go, what, what, what do we get out of that? And that that's hugely important. I see that stuff too, with different, even writing stories, everything. So Greg writes these great lessons learned. We put them up on the, on the uh -huh. website and, and you know, there, you know, it, it'll loop together three events or some topic and you're like, wow, that's, that's incredible. So he did one called, uh, April is the cruelest month. And it's about, you know, the significance of name, is there something in a name? And he tied a bunch of different stories together in school shootings. And he talked about, uh, the kid, uh, I already forget his last name, uh, Jeremy, who the, uh, Jeremy kid, Deal, Jeremy Deal, sorry, who, who was a kid, high school kid, Texas, committed suicide in front of his class years ago, Pearl mm. song, Jeremy, it's in reference. Oh, uh, okay, right? okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, you know, we had posted that, we post some of our articles on, on Medium, which is the um, uh, writing uh, website. They publish stuff and it's really cool. They got all kinds of great stuff on there and they mm -hmm. recommend, but, but we had it on there. And so you and I get my daily email from them. Hey, it, you know, articles you might be interested. And that one pops up about, uh, not Greg's, but about that story. And I was like, oh, this should be interesting. And I click on it and it's a, a page long with one photo in there. And it says, hey, this happened and this is actually related to the song Jeremy by mm. Pearl Jam. And it got all these likes and shares and all stuff. I'm like, um, so I never do this. I tried never to do this, but I commented out there and I put a link. Oh, you didn't comment. You went for the jugular, brother. I put a link to Greg's story. I said, hey, if you want a better understanding of what this is about, try this mm. story. And the author yeah. was like, hey, what's wrong with my – like commented like what's wrong with what I said. I go, nothing's wrong with it. I go, a, a child, a broken human killed himself in front of his friends. Can we fucking learn something from that to prevent the next one? Like yeah. th 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 your story – is is clickbait like you got yeah a bunch of you got paid money for that and what's right. the takeaway what did jeremy learn you profited off his death like why don't we learn yeah. something and and right. prevent it and it's just like like in a, and it's amazing to me how many of those stories like that are out there we're just like hey here's the story and you're like well and <laughs> and, and, and yeah. andy would you would you you put uh, industry leaders and the biggest brains and everybody else in the same room and you said, okay, let's get this done and let's pay yeah. it forward. And there's so yeah. many people out there that aren't paying it forward. There's so many people out there that say, hey, my little bandwidth, my little transmission here is more important than everything. That's why I get on my rants. And, and first of all, you crushed a Marin spirit. 
because Marin has been trying to write a book ever since I've known him. I don't. And, I uh, can't write. And, I'm a Marine. And the great thing Marine was, person, so it's going to be a so, crayon drawing. Well, he had a napkin oh. with a flat-sided crayon, and there was a series of clicks and grunts. <laughs> yep. And so now he doesn't know what to do there. And the second That's... thing is that uh, I would caution you, Andy. Uh, Mission Six Zero. First of all, shout out to them, folks. Look it up. Look up these real heroes. I'm nobody. These guys are the ones. And I want you to take a look, Andy, on there uh, somewhere on the site. It listed you as the science officer. And yeah. I, would admon- I would admonish you to look back at Star Trek and remember what always happened to the science officer. Oh, yeah, you know oh my God. So they always got shit that's... out before anybody else. So yeah, no, so that's hilarious. No, no but, so it's funny that, Greg, because, uh, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm trying to change that because it's like, uh, I call it like, hey, we've got, you know, we got, you know, the team of teams approach and we've got the freaks and the geeks. And that's it, my great. freaks, yeah. it's like, and and I I'm the I'm the chief geek, you know, so I'm I'm going for that title, you know. I I, I you know, I could care less about titles just like you guys, you know. It just yeah. uh, like you, it like, you, like matter. you said Yeah, you know, it it's it's like hey, yeah. But I, to me it, like like you said, it, you know, I'm glad you said that because I think sometimes there, you know, people are going to look at us and I, and I think especially especially you know in, in some of our naval special warfare community, there's oh, really been, it's, it's 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 really been and, and and I hate to keep frowning on it, but they, you know, and I'm not going to bag on them because they got a bad name and, and they've been, you know, they really tampered it down, you know, so I'm not going to rip on the seals. I'm not going to do that because, yeah. you know, but because frankly, you know, people can look at what we're trying to do and say, hey, well, these guys are trying to tell their war stories to make yeah, a buck, you know, yeah, exactly. and, 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 you know, and, and I think that's not really the intent It's to say, no, it's not. It's not. Yeah. Andy, listen, you, you don't have to defend that at all. Yeah. I'm sitting in an airport. I won't tell you the airport. And this young guy, obviously, with his Under Armour, I knew his game and, you know, saw him coming. And he, he picks sitting down next to me, which is a big mistake, which you know, Andy. And so mm-hmm. as he sits down next to me, he pulls out a book, and I, I recognize the title of the book immediately. Uh, and uh, I go, hey, I like the book. And he goes, oh, that's great. I go, where do you work? And he worked at Trade Oc or TCOM or something. He goes, oh, it's excellent reading. And I oh, go, gosh. yeah, that's, that's really good stuff. Well, the great thing about it is, is, is the book that he happened to be reading was just stolen liberally from, uh, from the cover to the title to everything else uh, by people we traveled with back in the day. And, and it took me years to get over the fact that who cares as long as the information is getting out there. Right. Yeah. And the idea is you know you got something good when everybody else in the world is claiming it. Do you get what yeah, I'm trying absolutely. to say? And Andy, well, your yeah. stuff is right on. It's spot on. So there's a couple of things I want to make sure be- be- before we close because Marin's always got an agenda and he's always sending me <laughs> he's always sending me texts saying shut up and let him talk. But the idea is, Andy, one, I want to make sure you're going to be back on with us. Can you do another pod with us? Hundred percent. And two, can we can we dig deeper into the book uh, uh, as as it's starting to come out and yeah, make sure that the right to. people are talking about it? And then I, I just want to thank you again in, in November not only for resilience but for your service to our great nation and for everything that you've done to to keep the constitution in place and to make me safer. Yeah, well, well thank you, Greg. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for, for having me on. It, it really is an honor and a pleasure. I've been, as I said, I've been big fans of your guys' work for a long time. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it's really, you know, I, I appreciate people say thank you for your service, you know, and, you know, but really uh, your services goes well beyond the uniform, you know, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank you guys for that too, because you guys are continuing to serve. So are we, we we've got servant's heart. That's what we're all about. That's what we're trying yeah. to do using this platform, using this platform to make people and teams better what they do. And, and I, I, I be, uh, I'm fired up to, to join you guys again, uh, you know, as appropriate. Yeah. So, so Andy, I'll put all the, and everyone listen, I'll put all the links in the description, everything. I know it goes on pre-order soon of the, the, the book, um, you know, deliberate discomfort, uh, how U S special operations forces overcome fear and dare to win by getting comfortable being uncomfortable. I love that saying my other favorite one too, yeah, is, buddy. Uh, that, that I, I like to use is, uh, um, I kind of got it from my, my brother, but it's, you know, no one, no one can kick my ass like I can. There you go. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's kind of more like a, it, it's a, it's my own mental health resilience kind of way of looking at it. Like there's no one is going to be tougher on me than me. And I try to be positive about that. Right. So when I'm beating sure, myself right. to go, well, what would, I, what would someone else say about me right now? Hey, you know, mm-hmm. they might be actually pretty impressed at that or I'm kicking myself in the ass. So, so I like that one as well, but I'll put all the links up and then, and then I'll, I'm going to check out the book cool. and read it. And then what I think maybe what would be cool 
is like, you know, I'll t take a chapter or story and we come back mm -hmm. and we just talk about just that one story and the science behind it. So we can be almost laser focused on one. Topic. Yeah. I think that maybe something like that, or if you've got one in specifically in mind that you think would be great. I think after the book, comes we all want to make people, awesome. we all want to make people faster and smarter and harder to kill. We want to yeah. make them more resilient. We want them to yeah. back off from the edge and take another look. And Andy, you're helping us do that. So you're to be applauded for that. Uh, I will have to call the other guy that uh, pays attention to our broadcast and make sure <laughs> that, he can, that he can be on on the same day. Yeah, uh, but listen, yeah. listen, thanks so much for being on, Brian. Yeah, we, we appreciate Andy. Uh, I'll reach out with you with everything. And we have, thanks for coming on, man. Thanks, guys. You guys rock.